I know every single one of my haul videos these days is like the most superlative, hyperbolically good haul that I've ever gotten. This genuinely is the best science fiction haul, book haul that I've ever had in my life. Stick around until the end of the video because I came into possession of my all time hall of fame, holy grail science fiction book, vintage science fiction book that I never thought I would actually lay hands on and own and now it's mine. So I'm gonna show you the stuff that I got before I got the Dragon's Horde of sci-fi books. Some good stuff. I'm not gonna do the thumbnail thing for each book because it would take five hours to edit. This is a vintage uh, fantasy book, Land of Unreason by L. Sprague de Camp and Fletcher Pratt. I don't read a whole lot of fantasy, but that looked really good. Farseer by Robert J. Sawyer, which is a book about dinosaurs, sentient dinosaurs, I presume. A lot of these books are gonna be available in a link in the description to my Etsy store. So I, if I keep all these books, they're gonna turn into furniture. I have so many of them. So I put them up on Etsy. It starts at 10 bucks a book. And if they're more than 10 bucks, I priced it so that basically I make five bucks profit after you subtract all the fees and the shipping costs for Etsy. So you probably could find these books for cheaper elsewhere. If you wanna buy from me, it's a way of getting something for a donation of five bucks to me. So Gordon R. Dixon, The Chantry Guild. Dixon is a pretty well-renowned sci-fi author that I've never actually read, and this is a first edition hardcover with a really great dust jacket there. The Magic Christian by Terry Southern. Terry Southern was a screenwriter, humorist, and a member of the new journalism movement back in the 60s. And this is, I think, his most famous book. Charlie Davis's Hookup, which is a history, a pictorial history of ocean fishing in Southern California, which is pretty cool. I probably am just gonna keep this for myself, a bunch of old photos. I live in San Diego I'm, and I'm a fisherman and, and I like this kind of thing. Pimp by Iceberg Slim, of course. What book haul is complete without Pimp by Iceberg Slim. This awesome vintage copy of Burmese Days by Orwell. This is one of the few Orwell books that I haven't read and it's one of those pa paperbacks that's made of like cardboard and in really immaculate condition. That's something I'm gonna hang on to as well. I finally found a copy of Blood Meridian. This is at a library sale, so I got this for a buck. And shamefully, I haven't actually read this. I got a copy of Arguably by Christopher Hitchens, which is his uh, collection of essays that was published, I think, posthumously for free. This is on the free cart at the library. That's gonna stick with me as well. Here's a copy of Larry Niven's The Magic Goes Away, which is an illustrated novel. This, I think I'm gonna let go of. I'm gonna sell this one. I got it for two bucks. Has awesome cover art, which is a sentence I'm probably gonna be saying quite a lot in this video. The Bigfoot book, the Encyclopedia of Sasquatch, Yeti, and Cryptid Primates. I love Bigfoot. I'm obsessed with Bigfoot and I'm a Bigfoot believer. And uh, I keep thinking like, man, it'd be cool to find a Bigfoot book at one of these thrift stores. Uh, and then I dismissed it. I was like, you're never gonna find it. I was literally just thinking that and I found that, I swear to God. Okay, now we're into the really good stuff. Um, I'll, I'll show you the clip. I found a bunch of this on the shelves in the sci-fi section at this Google bookstore and I was so thrilled by the time I made it to the end of the section that my hands were literally shaking. And then I went and found an employee of the book, uh, the Goodwill bookstore and asked her just by chance if she had seen in the back if there were more of these vintage sci-fi books because I told her like, it seems like someone donated their entire collection. I'm just wondering if you have stuff back there that you haven't priced that is uh, not out on the floor. And she brought out this big plastic bin full of extra vintage sci-fi books from the same guy um, or, or lady or, or whatever. This is I think from all one person. So I ended up spending 215 bucks at this one Goodwill. It will pay for itself and you'll see why by the end of the video. So let's start with the paperbacks. Martin Caden's Cyborg, the novel that inspired the $6 million man. Isaac Asimov's The Gods Themselves. Fred Saberhagen's A Spadeful of Space Time, which is a story collection. Saberhagen or Saberhagen wrote um, 
uh, Berserk, Berserker, which I owned a copy of, and then I got rid of it before I realized that it was a famous book. Immaculate Condition, Great Spine. Let's see who's in here. So Lasney, Orson Scott Card, Saber Hagen himself, Connie Willis, R.A. Lafferty, whole lot of people. Creatures of Light and Darkness by Roger Zelazny. Roger Zelazny's Sign of Chaos. A.E. Van Vogt's Supermind. A lot of these I'm kind of seeing for the first time because I just kind of shoveled them into the yes pile without looking at them too close. Stargate by Stephen Robinette. This looks just like a uh, similarly titled book that I have from uh, Alfred Bester. I think they actually may have reused this title graphic. Hold on, let me go get that book. Here's Stargate, and here is Starburst. Kind of getting a similar vibe. Look at this one. A.E. Van Votes, The Player of Null A. Look at this cover. I am not selling this one. This one is absolutely staying with me. Just gorgeous cover art. Sun's End by Richard Lupoff. Never heard of it. Gordon R. Dixon's Arcturus Landing. Incredible cover. Lone Wolf RPG. Read along, play along, choose your own adventure. I'm gonna sell these probably on eBay. I got a couple of them and uh, they're worth some good money. Here's another one of those. It's another Lone Wolf book. Jack of Shadows by Roger Zelazny, another incredible cover. The Doomfarers of Coromond by Brian Daly, a fantasy book with a good tagline and a great cover. Fantasy covers, I'm finding, are uh, almost as good as sci-fi covers at times, but not quite, because I'm still a bigot. Frank Herbert and Bill Ransom, The Jesus Incident. I actually had Bill Ransom as a professor in college, and this is a totally mint condition paperback copy. I am undecided if I'm gonna sell this or not. Harry Harrison, Homeworld, book one in the epic trilogy, To the Stars. Harry Harrison wrote Stainless Steel Rat. Here's Wheel World, which is book two in the same series. It's got this debonair protagonist guy on the cover. And I do have book number three somewhere in there. Roger Zelazny, Isle of the Dead, simply unreal covers on these Zelaznys. Zelazny, best known for Lord of Light. I have never read him. I have one or two other books from him, and now I have a whole lot more. My name is Legion by Zelazny. Frost and Fire by Roger Zelazny. The Last Defender of Camelot by Roger Zelazny. I think this is a short story collection. Contains five Nebula and Hugo nominees. So claims. Roger Zelazny is to die in Itilbar. The Talber. Probably both of those are wrong. The Weapon Makers, this is one of his more famous ones, I think. By, uh, is that Zelazny? No, that's A.E. Van Vogt. Vogt. A.E. Van Vogt. Gordon R. Dixon, Ancient My Enemy. Roger Zelazny's Alien Speedway. And Clipsis by Jeffrey A. Carver. I guess this is two books in one. Sorry for the reflection. If I don't film in natural light, the autofocus goes insane. If I do film in natural light, then it gets reflection on the book, so go oh well. Zelazny's Unicorn Variations. Janissaries, one of the sequels by Jerry Purnell. 
another lone wolf. The Lost Continent by CJ Cutliffe Hine. I know nothing about this at all. It's kind of a cool cover. The Empress of the Gods and the Warrior Priest. Sounds like a fantasy to me. Mike Sirota, Bicycling Through Space and Time. Me and the, uh, the two girls who uh, checked me out at this Goodwill had a laugh over this book. Greyhawk Adventures by Rose Estes. I don't know why I bought this. I think I was just going for it. Roger Zelazny, Four for Tomorrow, with an introduction by Ted Sturgeon. A prize quartet of novelettes by Hugo and Nebula Awards winner Roger Zelazny. Story collection. Gordon Dixon, The Dragon and the George. This is just incredible. Has to be, no it's not, science fiction book club selection. First pa uh, paperback publication, so it's a first edition. That looks like it has to be fantasy, but I guess it doesn't. Spider Robinson, Time Traveler's Strictly Cash. Another Zelazny. The Courts of Chaos. This is just awesome looking. Another Van Vogt, The World of Null A. I guess this is in the same series as the players of Null A. Null A. Uh, you will not be able to buy this. I am keeping this because look at it. Arthur H. Landis, Camelot in Orbit. Look at this thing. I barely even glanced at this before putting it in the basket. But look at this cover. Time of the Great Freeze by Robert Silverberg. Another just incredible vintage cover. New York City, 2650 AD, underground. Yeah, this is also mine forever. A.E. Van Vogt, Computer World, ultra modern science fiction for the post-1984 era. That is some juicy sci-fi. Sterling E. Lanier, The Unforsaken Hero. Hiero. Weird one. It's gotta be fantasy. Love Not Human by Gordon R. Dixon. This looks like a um, uh, Loch Ness. Yes, Love Not Human, from the icy depths of Loch Ness to the alien skies of Arcturus IV, from the strange people at the top of the hill to a lonely computer, from tentacled myrians and swamp-dwelling Sidorians to a telepathic dog and genius IQ cat, Gordon R. Dixon, Span space and time to explore the secrets of the human and inhuman heart. I'm, yeah, keeping that one for sure. John F. Carr, The Ophidian Conspiracy. Who the hell knows? Moid, if you're watching, this is for you. Last Human, one of the Red Dwarf novels. I actually used to own this and I bought a copy on a trip to Wales that I took when I was a little kid. And I don't know what happened to it, so I have it again. Last Human. Um, lover of Red Dwarf, for sure. I've loved it since I was a kid. James P. Hogan, The Two Faces of Tomorrow. It just goes and goes and goes. This haul is so incredibly good. Never heard of this one. Gordon R. Dixon, Tactics of Mistake, a door side novel. Looks like a first edition to me. Another Van Vogt, Lost 50 Sons. Van Vogt's Pendulum, very pulpy cover. Gordon Dixon with Rolling Green, Jamie the Red, guessing fantasy. Sorry for the uh, reflection there. Oh my god, I didn't even notice this. Oh shit. <sighs> Philip K. Dick and Roger Zelazny. Deus Ire. I have never heard of this. I really wonder if this is worth something. Look at the cover, look at this, look at this, look. Look at this book, 
Look at this book. Phil K. Dick and Roger Zelazny take you on a dangerous journey across a devastated landscape in search of the great god of wrath. Holy shit, man. Harry Harris and Star World, book three in that trilogy. Gordon Dixon, Naked to the Stars. And I think the last paperback, Gordon R. Dixon, Wolfling. And now we're on to the hardcovers. My favorite science fiction books to find are these kind of 70s era hardcovers with these awesome um, dust jackets. This is aesthetically my favorite kind of science fiction book to find, and I found like an entire box of them. So here's Stainless Steel Rat for President by Harry Harrison. Never read the first one. Han Solo at Star's End, a novel by Brian Daly. Trumps of Doom by, wouldn't you know it, Roger Zelazny, again. There's the man himself. Three to Dorsai by Gordon Dixon. I felt a little bit stupid buying this book because I used to own it. I thrifted it at a Salvation Army and then uh, never read it and it was redonated because I was trying to clear up some shelf space like an idiot. And it might have actually been this exact copy, but I have it again. The Faded Sun, Kesrith by C.J. Cherry, who is a female, or was a female author. I don't know if she's still alive. Uh, I said that she was he in my last video, I apologize. I actually have seen this book a couple times and didn't pull the trigger on it because it wasn't in like that good of condition. This is apparently like a ripoff of Dune, but that's just fine with me. I think I might have the collected works of Roger Zelazny at this point. Blood of Amber. Limits by Larry Niven. I feel like this was a whole genre of book. This, this space tavern, uh, kind of whimsical sci-fi novel. I keep seeing a lot of these. Mad Wand by Roger Zelazny. Thomas M. Dish, Triplicity. I'm keeping this one. There's a really great channel called Prison for Kids, which has uh, obviously a great name, but the guy does uh, this series of videos. I wanna say it's like weird ass books or something, and he does these really insightful reviews of these obscure sci-fi authors and sci-fi books. And he says the dish is incredible and underrated and really something special. And I don't think that I heard him talk about this book, but that's mine. Damon Knight, The World and Thorin. This also I am keeping. Damon Knight was um, an editor of some of the old, or one of the, I don't, I should know this. There was like a handful of the science fiction magazines that would publish stories from all the famous authors that we know and love these days. And Damon Knight and James Blish were like the two heads of state of science fiction. And I've read Blish and was really blown away by, uh, by him. And I have not read Damon Knight. And what an incredible cover this is. The Fires of Paratime by Ellie Mod Modesit, Modesit Jr. Another name that I just see floating around that I've never actually read. Annals of the Time Patrol by Paul Anderson. Another famous sci-fi author from this period that I haven't read. Masters of Eberron by Gordon R. Dixon. I keep seeing this book everywhere and now I finally have a copy. I've seen it in videos and uh, I've seen a copy of this in the bookstore down the street from me. And now I have it. One of, I think the best all time, or certainly most memorable vintage sci-fi covers. 
The Dancer from Atlantis by Paul Anderson. The same font as the original Dune, the very first edition of Dune had that same font and the same kind of aesthetic. And just great. There's a space pog with a bull and uh, I'm probably gonna hang on to that one. The Practice Effect by David Brin. Excellent cover. Look at this cover. A little goblin guy there in the back. Arthur C. Clarke's The Songs of Distant Earth. One of his best known books. The Seven Deadly Sins of Science Fiction, edited by Asimov et al. It has a Jack Vance story in it, so I'll at least read the Vance before I consider parting with this. Coils by Fred Saberhagen and, can you believe it, Roger Zelazny. Look at the back cover. Eye of Cat by Roger Zelazny. So, I think that's the last Zelazny. The only one I appear to be missing in his entire bibliography is Lord of Light, which is his most renowned book. So, when I find Lord of Light, I will, I think, probably likely have all the Zelazny books. All right, we're getting into the home stretch, and these are the, like, Hall of Famer. These are the absolutely incredible finds. Here is a copy, hardcover, of God Emperor of Dune. A cover that I've actually never seen before. And I don't know what edition this, oh my God. Copyright 1981. I'm not great at telling true first editions. I think it's just when it looks like this, there's this weird thing going on down here. Maybe this is a book club edition or something, but I don't see the numbers. It just says copyright 1981. So this may be a first edition and it's mine. I'm not selling this. This is gonna be mine. Here is Chapter House Dune by Frank Herbert. Pre-beard Frank Herbert. I don't think this is the same. Maybe it is the same series. Same deal, 1985, and it has this, this layout here. I've never seen that before. So possibly first edition. Uh, definitely mine forever and ever. And Dune. I, this book and the next book I'm about to show you, I cannot believe nobody got to these before I did. Oh, these are, these are Chinese printings, published by Cave Books Limited, Taipei. Look at that. These have to be rare. I'll look these up and see how much they're actually worth. First printing, huh. <laughs> This is an authorized Taiwan edition, so it's Taiwanese, reprinted by permission of the publisher for sale in Taiwan only. It may not be exported. First printing, November 1978. I can't find any on eBay. This might be something really rare. I'm just doing a quick Google search on my phone and I see nothing at all. I mean, this, who knows, this might just be worth 50 bucks, but this might be something that's worth a lot of money. So this one I know is worth money. This is the penultimate book. Another one that I, I, tr I like truly am astonished nobody grabbed just on the strength of what it is. That is a, what appears to be first edition hardcover of the Star Wars novel written by George Lucas. It was ghost written by someone, I don't remember who. Um, there's the back. Just from cursory eBay research when I was in the Goodwill, this is worth anywhere between $50 to $500. I have to do a little bit more homework on which edition it actually is. Uh, ah, shit, it has some damage there. The pages are separating a little bit, but still worth something or other. It has some production stills in it. 
Star Wars From the Adventures of Luke Skywalker, Del Rey Books, copyright 1976 by the Star Wars Corporation. And I, 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 this has to be a first edition, right? I mean, this looks like first edition first printing to me. There's no other information given. Another one I'll have to research, but this stands a chance of covering the cost of all of the books that I got today. And the final book, this is, like I said at the outset of the video, uh, the one book that I had in the back of my mind as the book that I wanted to find the most of any science fiction book, really any book at all. And it was not actually part of this thrift haul. I have a friend who watches these videos who texted me out of nowhere and said, hey, uh, do you want this book? Just in an offhanded way because her neighbor was giving it away for free on her driveway as part of a garage sale. It belonged to her ex-boyfriend. Sent me a photo of this book, not knowing anything about my desire for the book. Uh, and it just came, it just found, the book found me. So here it is. It's the Alan Dean Foster novelization of John Carpenter's movie, The Thing. This is an extraordinarily rare book. So I could have bought this on eBay. It would have cost me a lot and it would have ruined the thrill of the find. And I'm glad that I never bought it because the level of dopamine that I got off of this thing uh, was just unreal. And I will be reading this and reviewing it on the channel. My friend read it, she said that it was great. And uh, I just, I mean, I, when, when, when am I ever gonna hit this kind of a high again with vintage sci-fi? This is everything that I could possibly want, really. I mean, maybe if I found like a stack of first edition hardcover dunes or something, then it would be better, but I think this has got to be it. This has got to be the crowning achievement of my book hauling career. And um, if you saw something that you like, it may well be available on the Etsy link. Uh, I'm about to finish Solaris by Stanislaw, Stanislav, Stanislaw Lem. So there will be a review of that coming, but holy shit. 